stats quit. In this video, we will talk about survival time analysis or time to event analysis, which is very common in biostatistics. So if you're ready, let's dive in. Right, so before we talk about survival time analysis, it might be good to get a feeling of what survival time analysis is actually used for. So this kind of analysis lets you answer questions like, what is the impact of one or more clinical or non-clinical features on a patient's survival? For example, do patients with BRCA1 gene mutation have higher or lower survival rates in patients diagnosed with breast cancer? What is the probability that an individual survives three years after being diagnosed with a disease? Or, for example, are there differences in survival between groups of patients? For example, patients that were treated with drug A and versus patients treated with drug B. So these are the type of questions survival time analysis will allow us to answer. So survival time analysis or time to event analysis is just a group of statistical methods that we use to investigate the time it takes for an event of interest to occur. In other words, the variable we study is the time until an event occurs. So what is this event? Well, typical examples of an event of interest in a clinical setting are death or time to relapse. So it's important that the variable of interest has a start time, for example, the moment when the patient is diagnosed with a disease, and then the end time, which is when the event actually happens, for example, when the patient dies. And what's important to notice here is we're interested in the time between the start time and the event. And of course, this time, this duration can be measured in days, weeks, months, or years. And we talk of survival curves, but the event of interest doesn't necessarily need to be death. In fact, survival curves are also used in non-clinical contexts like engineering or social sciences. You could be looking at time until sneezing if you're allergic to dogs and you pet one, or the time between getting a cast for your broken arm and the moment your cast is removed. So in this case, your start time is the moment you get the cast and the end time, the event, is the moment your cast is removed. Some people may have broken their arm in February, some in March, some a year later. We're not focused on specific days or dates, but the time between the two events, the start time and the end time. And this is called serial time. So let's have a look at a specific example. Let's consider you're a hairdresser and you want to study the survival time of a haircut. Now your start time is the moment the person comes in for a haircut and the end time or the event is the moment the client comes back in to get a haircut again. You are now interested in the time between those two events. So basically how long does a haircut last? So you start collecting data of the people who come into your hairdresser saloon and, and write down when they get a haircut. And then when they come back in for a second haircut, you write that down as well. But what if the person didn't come back to get a second haircut? Perhaps they decided to go to another hairdresser and got a haircut somewhere else, or they moved and now they live as elsewhere, or they went bald and no longer need haircuts. Or, I don't know, they decided to never cut their hair again. Um, so sometimes we simply don't know when the event happened. That's when we need censoring. So actually, I kind of simplified things before. We said survival analysis measures the time from a starting point and an ending point. But the ending point doesn't necessarily need to be when the event happens. It could also be when the patient or that observation is censored. So let's talk a bit more about censoring. So to understand censoring, we need to remember that a study cannot go on indefinitely. You cannot keep 
gathering data forever. At some point, you're going to want to stop collecting data and create that survival analysis curve. So every study has a clear start and end date. So if you decided to start your study the, I don't know, 12th of October 2023 and finish it on the 12th of October 2025, you can only consider cases which started and ended within this time period. So people who came for their first and second haircuts between this time period. We can then consider that the event occurred. For those people who got the first haircut but never came back to get a second one in that period of time, you do not know when or if the event occurred. If a certain client came for his or her second haircut a day after you decided to end the study, you cannot consider him or her for the survival analysis. That case will be censored. So censored data is simply data you don't know if or when the event happened. In a clinical trial context, censoring means the total survival time for that patient cannot be accurately determined. In many cases, we study actual survival time, so the event of interest is death. Reasons for censored data can be that the patient dropped out of the study or is lost to follow up, or simply the patient survived at least until the end of the study. So the event, death, never actually happened while you were gathering data, but there is no knowledge of what happened after. In conclusion, Censoring can occur within the study, for example, if a patient decides to drop out, or terminally at the end, if you just don't know if the event happened or not. So how do we actually conduct survival time analysis? Well, the three most common methods are the Kaplan-Meier survival time curves, the log rank test, and Cox regression. But that is a story for another day. So I hope this video gave you a simple and easy to understand explanation of survival time analysis, what it's used for and common concepts like censoring. If you like this video, please let me know. If you have any questions or suggestions for new videos, do let me know as well. Your feedback is very much appreciated. So that is it. Thank you so much for your support and see you in the next one.